Guys, gals, and non-binary pals, welcome to Driving You Homo, the radio show podcast YouTube extravaganza where we delve into everything within the queer sphere that you need to hear. As always, I'm Wayne Carter, cabaret burlesque comedian, radio presenter, and all-round drag shambles. And today, I'm joined in the virtual studios by Robot from the Future, who <laughs> does... The, what, what was it? It's David, artist and superstar David Park. Hey, doll, how are you? Hey, how you doing? I'm good. How you doing? I mean, I'm living the dream. I'm upright, I'm breathing. I am a successful human. Um, so I, um, I've recently come across you on the internet because that is how all good relationships start. Um, I found you on the internet. You do things with your time. Question. <laughs> what do you do? Tell me yourself. Yeah, so I'm I'm primarily a painter. I do uh, paintings and murals, like big large scale murals. And um, but I I guess artists I like do lots of other things too, like makeup and digital collages. And I make videos. I have an interview video series. So just like lots of different at parts of creativity, but generally focused around queer culture, um, mental health awareness, queer visibility, like social issues, and then nice art things. So you're a massive and artist. hand movements apparently. And, oh, I just oh, twiddled all, my fingers a lot. <laughs> we live for the hand movements. Spirit fingers for days, <laughs> still. Spirit fingers for days. Um, so I, I have like so I came across you um, because of oh, I've lost my headphones. I came across you because of a um, mutual friend of ours. You did some work with someone, um, which we'll mention shortly. But uh, you're a, you're a visual artist. You're a um, you can you explain because I I would have called it graffiti but I don't think it is graffiti and that's I think that's a term that some people because your artwork is in spaces in prominent spaces in the world for the world to see um, and yeah. that my definition of that is graffiti but I think that's wrong can you explain what you do and like is it graffiti is it not graffiti yeah yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so I do a lot of like large scale, I call them murals. But um, yeah, there's loads of different terms like public art, street art, murals, graffiti, and they can often get like confused together, which mm. which is fine, basically. But um, being in that culture, I describe what I do, I always have, um, I pretty much always have permission to do it. So it's legal spaces, I've talked with the space beforehand. And um, it, and I do that because it means that I have like multiple days to work on the project and I'm not having to look over my shoulder. I've had issues with anxiety in the past. I don't want to be dealing with the anxiety of no, <laughs> whether I, I, relate, I can I get the piece out. Yeah, so that's why I kind of went that route. And what I do, and I started doing smaller paintings and I'm really, I'm into like abstract realism. Mm. So it takes a longer time to do and just painting takes longer than say stencils or or um like wheat pasting which like you might do illegally mm -hmm. so for all that reason like i like having more time so what i do is like legally organized and so i don't call it graffiti because like graffiti is very much its own culture and uh it's generally it's going to be done in public space and a large part of it is like taking back public space without permission mm -hmm. putting up what you want and that's like part of the whole idea of it um so i feel like when muralists cool say what they do is graffiti you're kind of like taking the street cred and the cool cred and the badass cred from another culture that you haven't really earned yeah and like i'm i'm like very aware of that sort of thing like what i do is portrait painting so i'm constantly like engaging with different communities or different demographics within the queer community and i always try and be really aware of um and also because of mental health like aware of who i am what my background and context is what how I think and how that relates with the world and I think that comes across in a lot of the work but also in terms of like how you describe it and mm. I think like commonly graffiti is used because it's like a cool word isn't it like oh well, that's true, graffiti. Yeah. I think <laughs> it's weird I think I think especially within the queer community I think we get we get hung up on labels and we get hung up on like terminology and I think at the end of the day I think we need to be a little bit more open and accepting and sort of just listen to what people how they identify or how they label themselves and go okay yeah. cool like oh i didn't realize it wasn't this therefore okay cool it's it's a tricky one yeah. uh, but so 
you and I mean it doesn't it doesn't really matter mm. like that much like I'm not I'm not gonna get upset if someone calls it graffiti because honestly I'm doing it for my friends who are graffiti artists and like yeah. I know that they're graffiti and I'm not yeah so like I don't care if you if you describe it as that but when I when I I think the biggest power we have in anything we do is our own words and our own actions so that's when right. I describe myself that's what I that's what I choose to do and I'm not in control I'm not in complete control of how other people perceive things, how they interpret it. Yeah. Like that's the whole thing about art, right? Is that you make your baby and you put it out into the world yep. and then you just have to deal with the fact that the world is going <laughs> to do what they want to. Exactly. <laughs> no, I fully, as a, as a performer, I fully relate to that strongly. Um, so you, so I think what I, what draw, drew me to you as an artist is that you from my perspective and like you said it's all subjective and what your thoughts are is going to be different to how person a person b person person me thinks um but for me i see your work as inherently queer and it is taking a space in mainstream society and just going hey this is some gay stuff this is some queer nonsense and you need to sort of take you know take notice like we're here we're in these spaces you know yeah. shut up and listen essentially yeah um, definitely that and that that was a big motivation for me in starting it because um so I was, I was painting properly for like maybe only six months or so I got into like public murals like street art really fast because I was inspired oh, by and so wanted to be out in the world doing it but um I started painting queer things and it really was a conscious decision to be like I want to I feel like I queer values have been so important to me like not just as a queer person understanding myself but just the values of like acceptance and understanding and compassion and of realizing that we all have different experiences and perceptions mm -hmm. and and being sensitive to other people like all of these things I think uh, it can get twisted in the in the media a lot about like policing other people or like oh you can't say anything anymore but at the core of it, what it's about is about treating other people with respect and compassion. Fully. And that's what I see in drag. That's what I see in lots of aspects of queer culture. And so to me, when I'm painting like a giant drag queen in a public space, I love doing it in queer bars. I've, I've done that a lot. I love being in those spaces, but it's also important for me to feel like that message is able to be received by people who aren't gonna go to a queer bar, who aren't gonna go to a drag show. Same. Cause I was that person, you know, like I grew yeah. up in the countryside and I didn't have any any access to queer culture or anything like that mm -hmm. until I was very well ad an adult because um, I didn't even feel like I could watch it on my phone you know like I'm 28 so we did have we had social media by the time that I was an older teenager but I remember I didn't even make that step like the closest thing I did was watching Will and Grace um, and even that I kind of had to do in secret so I feel like I, that's kind of fed into this idea that I feel like when you put something very much in a public space where like someone walking by doesn't even necessarily have to choose to click on a link to see it, just conceptually that um, I think can be quite powerful because you never know who's going to be walking down the street and seeing it. And so um, in terms of visibility and awareness and just espousing these like values of compassion that are inherent in queer culture, that's, mm. that's what I see as like my, my, my mission. And it's a, it's, it's a mission that I strongly connect to, and that's why I reached out to you because, again, Driving You Homo is a multi-level platform and it's on mainstream uh, radio. So it's like it's bringing to light, again, because I, I, I see what I do both on radio as a drag performer, but as myself as an individual walking out in sort of my – sometimes I wear trousers, sometimes I wear dresses. D depends on how I'm feeling in the day, like I'm on that sort of – I, I guess non-binary journey but like uh, I am outwardly queer and I think it's important to project that in your life um, to people that aren't themselves queer because I think we fall into the, we can fall into that sort of echo chamber where I'm like oh I'm yelling at you I'm telling you to be better but you already know that like you know there are issues in our community and like yeah it, it's to talk to the people that aren't or to like bring to light the people that maybe don't know about the lgbtqi spectrum community life um to go like hey we're not crazy i mean some of us are i am but like there are there are plenty of like yeah you know queer queer folk out there that are like lovely people so 
Yeah, so it's it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> <laughs> just um, not just not your thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, no, I get that. That definitely resonates with me, and I think that because my experience of um of prejudice or of any kind of like misunderstanding of whatever sort that is, is that usually it comes from like not having a direct experience of it. And as, so- as soon as you meet someone and you realize, and like there's been countless like studies on this too, like like people have these very distorted views because it is ignorance, you know, that is what the word ignorance means. You just you just don't know and it's not your fault. Um, maybe you're from a place that doesn't have that direct contact or experience. So, but once you have that, you see this person walking down the street, maybe you see a mural and the more like, it kind of contact we're able to have the more that you realize we're all just human yeah and nothing is that scary like it's, everything's it's, it's okay a little, yeah, it's a little bit of fabric on a on a person it's a little bit of painting <laughs> on like on a wall like it's not that big of a deal like yeah relax and it and it is interesting this like because i think as queer people it's important for us to have our safe spaces mm-hmm. and to feel like oh, the yeah. space is where and there's definitely no one is under any responsibility to have to go out and deal with that because depending on who you are, some people, it's like, it's really, really unpleasant. Mm-hmm. But um, I think if you're able to, and I do feel able to go out and paint something very queer in public, mm. um, and, you know, this is like a whole other topic, but say like uh, someone who presents as female or someone who's visibly trans, like if they're out on the street, they do get harassed a lot more 100%. in this public space. Um, so I kind of see it as like I'm lucky to be able to do that and I hope it has a positive effect yeah I I think we all come with our inherent privileges I think what you just mentioned there brings me back to a story that I have personally where it's such a weird juxtaposition I was doing a fringe festival in Australia and I've got a lot of burlesque friends I'm a burlesque performer as well and the Uh amount of the amount of catcalling and sexual sexualization that they get just walking in the street, not in their burlesque art, art like just in their normal clothes that they wear on the street. Yeah. Um, and they, the wolf whistles and all the like judgment and stuff like that. And I'm standing there in sort of, I guess, for lack of a better word, boy clothes. I get nothing. Then I get up and drag. And then that's when everything, like then I get all the sexual attention as well um, from both men and women. So, like, women are just as bad. So I would get sexually, like, felt up. Like, I had a woman run across the street and slap me on the ass when I was in drag. And I was like, you wouldn't do that to me if I was a biological woman or if I was, you know, someone presenting as female. Like, so why would you do it to me? Like, it doesn't make sense. It's, I think sexualization is a very meaty topic that um, yeah. we... It, it, it's, in, it's inherent within culture and I think we need to sort of take stock of and just sort of go like hey let's maybe not be so terrible all the time yeah, um, yeah I mean a lot of that's it, it run, all this stuff like runs so deep any of that kind of like systemic like societal um, mm. like behavior and action it's like people don't even realize that you're falling into it like this is the whole thing about implicit bias and like I think a lot of us have yeah. been going through like an even bigger experience of of like acknowledging that within ourselves than we might have done before because of all the protests and the BLM movement happening. Exactly. And like, and we all have it, you know, and that's why I think I said it earlier, like it doesn't mean if you're ignorant or you fall into these behaviors, it doesn't mean that you're a bad person. No. Like it just means that you're human. And it's, I think what I like to encourage in people is and what I think is inherent in mental health, which is really important and like everyday mental health, not okay. just if you have schizophrenia or depression or like generalized anxiety disorder, which is all really important, but just for all of us, it's just having an understanding of like, how does our mind work? How are we affected by the world around us? And how does our perception affect what we do? And and it, and it, I think it, it's really important and it's, it's interesting. It's like, it can really? be fun too, but like, I don't, I don't think it needs like obviously there's very serious things that we're talking about but I feel like people get put off yeah that kind of introspection because it's scary you know like I want to believe that I'm a good person I want to believe that I'm not racist so I'm just yeah. gonna like put it away and not even think about it yeah. whereas like you're not gonna get anywhere if you're not even prepared to like have the conversation or or Absolutely. even just inside yourself I think I think education is super important and I think ownership is super important and I think most I think people inherently want to try and be better 
in their lives. But I think when they, like you said, when they're brought up with, oh, you're maybe not this, or maybe you have these in- inherent biases, and they go like, I'm not a racist. And you're like, mm, but also you're a cis white person. Like, come on, like, let's be real. So um, it, is, it is hard when people are thrust into that kind of uh, confrontation, I guess, when, they, when they've got that privilege. Um, but uh, let's slide away slightly from that because I <laughs> <laughs> because we're the- I mean, that's a big topic and I think we're going to be talking more about it later. So, yeah, I kind of jumped ahead there. Yeah, no, I it's full, like that's that's my life is like or well, that's life in general is meaty topics smashed into like fun things. But what, <laughs> what I want to do is I've I've managed. I don't know how well this is going to go with my technology, but I've um, I have managed to get some of your artwork Oh, where are we? Oh, here we are. Okay, wait. Can 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 I do it? Am I a successful human? I can see it, but it's quite dim. There we go. Yeah. Oh, oh my microphone is muted. Damn it. So your microphone's gone off. I can't hear you. You're like muted right now. So we managed, can you hear me? We managed one piece of tech, but then the other went away. Okay, so what happened? Wait, let's see if I. What happened is. What happened <laughs> is I lost my microphone as soon as I changed. Let's see if it. Oh. Well, that's fine. You don't. You don't need to speak. I mean, this is about <laughs> me, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. So what's going to happen is I am going to bring up on the screen your if if my microphone works, camp. But what I will do is I've I've managed to get some of your artwork um, from your Instagram at David Puck. Oh, look from me. Uh, a shameless plug. Uh, <laughs> so I'll bring them up on the screen. So if you're watching on YouTube, you get to see them. If you're listening on radio slash uh, podcast, you can uh, go to David Puck Artists. They're all on uh, these Ill- images or you can you know get to the dragon you have youtube but um they will also be describing them for you beautifully Ooh. back to the era of radio Ooh. and oh, all hey. we have is our imagination <laughs> um so you can explain um i guess what the well what the artist or what the illustration is why you did it and sort of why it's important i guess they're the kind of but you're smart you, you'll figure it out you're a yeah you're a successful human. Let's see. Smoke a pamba. All right. Oh. Okay. Camp. Oh, and I can hear you too. Wonderful. Yes. Maybe I just accidentally pressed the microphone off. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so this is now also turning into an interview slash tech tutorial for anyone yes. listening. Like, this is what happens. Te- I'm going to do a TED talk. It's going to be camp. Yeah, go for it. Um, yeah, so the first one we've got is um, I did this. So I'm from England. I'm from Hereford, which is on the border of Wales. But I've been living abroad for like five years. And the last year and a half, that was in California and mostly in L.A. And I just moved back like two weeks ago. Um, so I'm back in Hereford now, actually. And so this is on Venice Beach in L.A., which is um, if you've seen like the Dogtown documentary about the skateboarders, like Venice Beach is quite a it's quite a famous place um, in L.A. And it's used a lot. And there they have like some spaces where it's pretty much a free for all. Okay. And people that start like when you start doing murals a lot of people ask like how do you start doing them and in most places they'll have areas where you can just go and paint what you want because nobody cares and sometimes it's like legal spots like graffiti parts Mm -hmm. um and other times it's just it'll be an abandoned area where you just know that you can do it and that's how I started painting when I was living in Berlin I would just go to these walls and just like play around And um, that's like so much less pressure and so much easier and more fun than like trying to jump into it from like, like, like finding walls takes such a long time in murals, no matter how like publicly appealing your work is just finding the wall is like the most time consuming part. Yeah. So, so this is, so that was a big intro, but this is one of those spaces. It's like a graffiti park in Venice Beach. So I went there, this was like right when I just moved to LA. And I was just like, I just want to go paint somewhere. I'm on the beach, palm trees, beautiful, like, you know, that classic, like, California weather. Yeah. And I did, I did like, three. I did one big one of Mayhem Miller from Drag Race, who's now a friend of mine after having done that. She lives in L.A. We became friends. 
um, and work together. And then I did one of Raja. And then this one is Trixie's eyes on a trash can on a big dumpster. And then they're pink because she's all about pink. And then above it in tiny letters, I don't know if you can see, but it says, um, just as I thought, trash. Which a nice person pointed out to me, like Jasmine Masters actually said. So I, I should have drawn like, Jasmine Masters eyes. I genuinely, I was like, just when I thought trash, I'm sure that's Jasmine Masters, but I'm, I'm glad you clarified that. Yeah, I think at the time I thought, maybe I like thought Trixie said it, or I just was like, I I don't know. Like, the, so the thing with this one is, is that this is like, took, probably took like an hour, and it was just sort of fun. It's like going out and just paint whatever. Um, and this was facing the Venice boardwalk. So I just liked the idea of having these huge dramatic eyes. And yeah. I think when we think of drag makeup, we think of the kind of like eyes a bit like Trixie's or people who paint in that way where it's very, very exaggerated. Yeah, so very intense. That's why I wanted to do on. that. Yeah. 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 And I did, and I thought, it, I thought it was kind of funny. I feel like would Jasmine Masters find it funny if you painted her on a trash can? I don't know. I feel like she might, because she like likes being kind of glamorous, whereas you know that Trixie would see the joke. She yeah, would be exactly. Like, You're right. I'm trash. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I fully, I fully relate. I, I love it so much. It was one of the first ones I saw. I've got this one, which yes, yeah, so, think sorry? I think I'm trying to remember. Is this Vanjie? Yeah, yeah, it is. <gasps> Camp. Yeah. Yeah, so actually, I should say, because I think a few of these are all going to be Drag Race uh, queens. And, like, the reason, I think Drag Race for a lot of people, like, I went to drag before I started watching Drag Race. I actually got into Drag Race, like, kind of late. Mm -hmm. And I used to, the first experience I had of drag was, like, Sink the Pink in London and these kind of, like, crazy big, like, trashy drag raves. Sink the Pink is everything. Yeah. Oh, my God, I love them. Um and uh yeah so that was my first experience of it and that's i love that kind of drag but i think when it comes to doing like public murals i really like the idea of something being like people being able to read it um and like for better or for worse like the drag race queens are the they are the like most famous figures within queer culture now like we all know them and we recognize them like you just recognize banji Mm-hmm. so I do I paint other type I paint other queer people I'll paint local queens and friends of mine and stuff like that but um what I'm what I really like is when you can hit this middle point of where if you're you if you know you know yeah. if you know that's band you know it's her but when I so I painted this on the front of my art studio in LA and if you're not queer or not even interested in like that kind of idea it doesn't necessarily read to you as a queer image. Mm-hmm. And sometimes for me, that's really useful. I don't need to do it so much anymore. But when I was first starting out, finding a space where people would let you paint a drag queen is so hard. Yeah. So what I would do is I would like to the building owner, I would tell them I'm painting a woman and then I would paint a drag queen. And like, I felt kind of bags is a little bit deceptive, but I'm like, you know, if they have an issue with it, whatever. And like, so it being like female presenting was this really like handy secret thing in order to get the queer imagery out there. And it's like, and it's funny because that's kind of like that coded messaging is exactly. kind of been a big part of queer history. And thankfully we don't have to do it so much anymore. And I'm finding like the more years I've been doing it for a few years now and I'm finding every year as I get like more successful and people just want my work, no matter what it is, yeah. it's a lot easier for me to be like, well, it's going to be as queer as, fa- queer as, oh my God, I was <laughs> yeah. about to swear. You already told me not to. <laughs> you did well, no, you did well. <laughs> it's going to be queer as F and, um, and like take it or leave it. But uh, to begin with, when you're trying to get out there, like a lot of mural, mural is, like this is a big advantage of like graffiti is that you can do whatever you want. So I have like, I have queer graffiti friends, like Hugo girl is like an amazing graffiti uh, person and like loads of other ones from LA that they can put whatever they want out because they're doing it illegally. Whereas when I'm doing mine, I do have to secure that wall and like exist within the community in some way. Um, So anyway, that's like a massive preamble again, but that's, that's kind of why a lot of that, like a lot of these are going to be drag race girls and a lot of them are going to be ones that are like very female presenting. Yeah. So this is Vandy and um, she was on the front of my art studio and I kind of, there's a Mexican artist called Deity Art who's a female Mexican graffiti artist. She did the other side of the door and she did this amazing Mexican um, woman 
So I was vibing off of that. And I was like, well, we're going to do like those kind of guardians out the front of the door, like Chinese lion style. And I'm oh, going to wow. also do a Latino woman, but mine's going to be Banji drag. <laughs> um, and I put roses in her hair because her one had roses. So I was kind of, vi- I was doing like the queer version of what deity had painted on the other side. Um, and I very much felt that like every time I walked into my art studio, I was like, I would look at these two like women and they, I would feel like protected as I walked into this space. It was That's like, pretty it cool. Was that, like the, the the fact that your art studio were like, yeah, like because I'm sure that it wasn't just you two that were in the art studio. I'm sure there were plenty of other artists that worked there, and like the yeah, fact that you two were. It was like out. it was like a massive warehouse. Um, very like, and they just divided up the space. It was really cool actually. Um, and the area was very Latino. It's called Boyle Heights in LA. Um, which is an, and so they also let me paint the back of the building, and that one was like sixty foot tall. Oh goodness! So I did a sixty foot by fifty foot. So I don't know how. See, I'm so American now. I'm like thinking in feet instead of meters, but that's it's big. It's big. It's <laughs> big. It's, it's and I it did. And so that's actually the biggest one I've ever done. Every single piece, and I did a massive Valentina, and they were cool with that too. And they and in, in that, by the time I'd done the front one, they liked it so much, regardless of what it was, that they were like, "You can do whatever you want this time." So oh, that wow. time, I was very much like, "This is a drag queen, and that's what I'm going to paint." And it was huge, and it was um, looking over this like community space where um, they would throw like all of these massive parties. So I would. I would come back in the, but like kind of local community parties, mm. like on Easter and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would come back and Valentina would be like looking over like grandmas and children, like like doing these little parades and marches. And that would fill me with joy. <laughs> That's cute. Like, like our, our drag queen, like elders looking over us and making sure that everyone's okay. That's cute. That's yeah, wonderful. I love the idea of them being these kind of protectors. Like yeah. I, I, I feel like drag, like, whether it's accurate or not there's definitely this idea of them being leaders within our community and i think they are they're symbolic leaders they're people that very much put themselves out there throughout right. history like we go back to someone like marsha p johnson and and i feel i i there's a mythical sense of them too so i i definitely think for me there's like a big link between this almost spiritual witchy protector side of drag too yeah. Um, like I'm kind of this like peaceful warrior, so I think about that a lot. <laughs> yeah, no, I I fully connect to that, so I'm with you there. I've got the, a third illustration, a third mural, and uh, yeah, Black Lives Matter BLM. Yeah, and then this is uh, this is Jada Essence Hall, who just won the last series of Drag Race. You see, this is why the preamble was important, because people would be like, why? Like, every single one is Drag Race. Like, what's wrong with you, you fan girl? <laughs> <laughs> I promise I have other types of No, but I think, but, but like, I think, I, and the reason I think it's important, because like you said this earlier, is that, like, you need to make it, I guess, not marketable, but you need to give someone a basis of reference. You need to go, like, so this is Jada Essence Hall, um, but then you've you've added extra. You've added m- more information to the story. So you've gone, yeah. okay, I can connect to this because I love Jada Essence Hall. Oh, it also has a story behind it. What is the story? Go from there. Same with like your Trixie Mattel, just as I thought, trash. Like it, sim- different conversations we're having, but like it's mm-hmm. about taking something that is mainstream connected within queer culture and putting a message adding a message on top so um yeah definitely and i think i think that like the thing about portraits and we can get more into this in a bit because it's important to work with you is that like each it's about the individual person themselves but it's also about like every person you represent certain things depending on who you are or like symbolically or or in like your background and so i feel like there's a re- we relate to people who are in the public eye but a lot of the time because we see a part of ourselves in it or we see a part of their story and that's like a big success of drag race is that as much as people have criticisms of it and a lot of that is rightly so in terms of like lack of trans representation and female representation mm. and that's all like i agree with but then 
compared to other TV shows, the amount of diversity and the amount of stories and queer stories and like minority stories that get told is just insane. And yeah. and it's not just me as like a white person saying that. Like Bob the Drag Queen talks about that a lot yeah. as well. That sibling she rivalry. works I've, in I've, other. I've, you listen to Monet Exchange and Bob the Drag Queen on sibling rivalry. They talk about that stuff all the time. Yeah, they're very like congratulatory, especially like Bob says she works in other other production oh. and behind behind the scenes and in front no other production comes close yeah. to the amount of representation that Drag Race does. So I think sometimes it's like we can still constructively criticize something whilst also appreciating it. what it does do well. And yeah. I think that sometimes, you know, we're like, we feel so passionate about about what we want to criticize and something else that it, we, I, it's, it can almost get lost what to be also grateful for. But it is a balance, you know, like I'm not going to say that the stuff that it does wrong is unimportant because it is important too. Yeah. Um, anyway, that's a whole other topic too. Well, it slides into education. It slides into like, uh, <clears throat> and and being open to new ideas and being open to like listening like to different stories. And it, I guess it ties in well to the Black Lives Matter movement because if we don't open up and listen to and validate the stories of our POC brothers and sisters and listen to what they're saying and go like, actually your voice is important. And I, so why, why Jada Essence or why this mural specifically? Like, tell me about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So I went down a little different rabbit hole there for a second, but yeah. So this one, I did this, um, it's currently in LA and then I think it's going to be, it's in Santa Monica, but they're going to move it to WeHo. I, the mayor of WeHo, they were talking about having a permanent spot there. It's West Hollywood. And so I did this like at the beginning of the protests as they were really gathering pace and all around LA. And I think in other, like lots of places around America and other countries, because of corona everything was boarded up mm -hmm. um so all the businesses were closed down and they had these like big wooden like slabs over the windows so we were already doing like painting those boards to just give like to beautify the city and to like to make it less depressing and less apocalyptic like yeah. la already looks apocalyptic as it is and then you add these massive wooden boards and it's just a whole other thing yeah. so that was already happening and then when the protests were gearing up it just made complete sense to shift gear and to be like along the protest routes to basically turn these storefronts into giant protest signs um so a lot of projects started popping up and i was doing this myself but then i managed to find like projects who were organizing to get permission to put it up so like they're going to try and they're going to auction off the pieces once they have to come down and donate that to black lives matter and other organizations so that's what's going to happen with this piece um, and other ones that I did. So that was essentially the idea was like, let's make a supportive message for the protesters um, in the spaces that they're going to be marching past. And at the same time, like beautify the city. Um, and so I chose to do Jada because she just won Drag Race. And this is a look that she did on Drag Race, like in the first, I think the first no, the Meet the Queens, mm -hmm. she dressed Black Panther inspired. Um, and that's what this is. This is like taken from an image of her with her fist up. I had to edit a couple together. But um, so I like knew from her doing that, that she would, that's something that she believed in promoting within herself and her brand as well as like her life. But I still like, I reached out to her before doing it and I, I like sent her the design and I asked her for her consent and like what she thought about it. And she was totally down. And that's something that I've been doing. I do every single time now. I didn't do it when I first started, partly because I didn't think it mattered. I was like, like, they don't care. They're not even going to see it. Like, who am I? But as like, the more I've been doing them, like, I feel like it's important that I can't like, it would feel presumptuous for me to take someone else's image and to put it out in this space and to especially add a political message without having their, their approval of it when possible. Um, so that's been an important part to me. And then whenever I do sell the work, if I can, I always donate a percentage of that back to the person. And a lot of the time they choose to then donate that on to another organization because I don't get paid a lot. So it's not a lot of money, but it's yeah. like, it's, Every it's essentially bit, giving yeah. something back to them. So, so I did that recently with like, I did some of Willem in Alaska and I managed to get paid for that afterwards. And then Willem chose to donate that to a Black Lives Matter local organization in LA. 
And that happens a lot. It happens with a peppermint mural I did too that ended up going to queer trans housing. Um, anyway, that's going down another line. But um, the point of me saying that is that this wasn't working. Like it was my choice to do this, but then I kind of got Jada's um, like approval and consent to use her image in it. Mm -hmm. And then that was like put out on the streets of LA. And um, but the fact that yeah, so I, you you did a couple of things that I I, I just want to mention that I think as artists, both visual artists yourself and performers, is that you have recognized that your um, you've taken Jada's image and you've gone, I've taken your image, but I'm an artist, you're an artist. We're going to share that together like and i'm going to give some of the money to you as well to go like so you're paying so like if i re recreated someone if i ins was inspired by a drag performer let's say jada if i i see a look that she has created and then i am inspired by her look i should acknowledge that you know just a simple acknowledgement because i think i think a lot of people can be i think we can be inspired by things. And I think it's important to shout those people out. Does that make sense? Yeah. And especially when you're like, the whole point is to lift up and amplify um, demographics that are usually disenfranchised or taken mm -hmm. advantage of. Like obviously Jada is a million times more successful than me, but there are a lot of people like Jada mm -hmm. who are not and who are exploited every day. And especially in America, there's a big, you know, it's part Disconnect. of the conversation that yeah. black culture and black talent has been exploited a lot throughout history and then used by white people that then get celebrated for basically using something that came from black communities. Mm -hmm. So, and like, I guess you could say I'm still like doing that to an extent, but um, I try and in whatever way I can, I'm always trying to involve people in, in the work like yeah. if they want to be involved in it, like giving them, putting that, having their voice be in it. And um, we can talk about this later because we're still doing the murals. But what the main way I'm doing that now is that I've, I'm doing a video series where I interview people mm -hmm. whilst painting them. And then I'll live paint them on camera while talking to them. And the idea of that was really to be like, I'm still going to do a painting. So I like painting and I believe in it. But um, it's like making their voice part of the process. And yep. I'm going to have vinegar next week. We're going to be doing it. And I've had, I've done quite a few so far. And like, that feels right to me to be like, oh yeah, no, we have the vinegar mural just came up. Yeah, good segue. <laughs> yeah, well, you said vinegar and we have a mural of the one and only vinegar strokes. So Yeah, you say it three times and spin around and she appears in the oh, mirror. God, don't, say, well, don't, say, don't say it anymore. I've seen enough of her. <laughs> um so yeah this is this is how i was um introduced to you as an artist i uh, good gal pals with Vinny, um and uh i saw this image i saw um i saw this pop up in my news feed and i was like who is this person who painted this mural um i need to i need to be invested in their, in their journey who's done that <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, but so you you were saying that you're going to do sort of uh what are they called like a painting interview yeah i'm excited so this so the mural that's just come up is the it's the vinegar strokes who a lot of people know from the uk drag race um but also it's, it's been on west end as a musician and like very well known and around the uk but just in case people don't um and i just did this, this is the last piece i did last week in london and um, with a group called Global Street Art that kind of have walls that they then like let people do whatever they want. Um, so that was really nice to have the ability to just paint anything. Um, and I chose I chose Vinegar. And through that, she came down um, to look at it and came just as I was finishing and stayed. And we had a really nice chat. And we've been talking more since then and are, like becoming friends through that process. And that's one of the things that I really love about art and how I come to see art now in my life is that it's really about connecting with people mm -hmm. and about communication. And, and, you know, it's not always going to be about connecting with the person that I'm painting. It'll be about say connecting with like with you right now, like we now know each other because of this mutual connection with vinegar. And yep. I love that, you know, that's like, we wouldn't have met if I wasn't painting. And I think that's a really beautiful thing. And we wouldn't um, have met if I did drag and it all like, it's all about, I think, being open to new people and new experiences. I think it's really cool. 
Yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, so Vin is going to, I think on Wednesday on my Instagram, Instagram Live, David Puck Artist, and um, we kind of, you know, kind of like this, you know, it's an informal chat about the person and just giving uh, giving her space to talk about what's important to her. And mm-hmm. and I'm going to do, because uh, that's probably not going to last that long. It's in shortage by the box park. Mm-hmm. And they get repainted every few months or so. Like, it, it kind of depends, but it'll also probably get tagged. Like, this is just a part of, like, public art happens all the time. Yeah. So I thought it would, like, Vinegar had said, like, she, um, like, she loves it so much that I thought it would be nice to do her a canvas version. And so I was like, well, like, I'll do that for you. And then, you know, like, do you want to come and have a chat about it while we're doing it and we'll film it? So it kind of, like, evolved from there. Oh, but, wonderful. Um, yeah, but hers, I'm excited. Like, cool hers, like, and I saw the, uh, the hashtag it could be, um, which connects back to Jada's Black Lives Matter movement is um, uh, Vinegar Strokes has the hashtag it could be. And then it's the same thing. Like, there are people within um, UK Black... The UK black experience is, I guess, different, but still not great connected to the African-American experience. But like, um, so Vinnie is using her platform and she's going, it could be my brother, my sister, my mother. It could be my friend. It could be my lover. It could be, it could be the hashtag. It could be, and you write down or you post an image of, or an illustration or something of someone who is connected to you in your life and say like this racism could happen to this person in my life yeah. and I don't want it to happen. So, um, yeah. yeah. And I think that's a good, it's a good tool because like we were talking about before, once you know someone and you realize that there's like, they're a human and you in some way can start think about thinking about them in this empathetic way, mm-hmm. like someone's attitude is going to completely change and I I, th- I remember I think in within queer movements there was a similar idea of being like relating the fact that like you're a member of your family can be queer like someone in your community can be queer and trying to get that personal connection yeah um and it's sad in a way I guess that people don't it's harder to have that sense of empathy for this like distant person but I think that is just how humans work um so I'm actually excited to learn more about the campaign because I, like I said, I've been in LA, so I don't know a lot about it just from what I've talked to Vinegar well, about. I won't, it, so. say, I won't say anything. I'll let you, um, that could be a question on your show. And you said it's going to be on Instagram, yeah? Yeah, yeah, on Instagram live, but then it'll be posted on my page and on YouTube uh, oh, wonderful. later. Wonderful. So that is something to look out for in the future. I am excited for that. Um, and I yeah, know... someone just commented on it saying that I'm Bob Ross, which I was very happy about. Who is... <laughs> yes. Well, so like I, I, I was talking to you uh, before we started recording um, in terms of like artists that maybe inspire me a little bit. So I'm thinking of people like people that inspire me in terms of visual art are people like Salvador Dali and Keith Herring and maybe Banksy um, in terms of like sort of surrealism and sort of murals slash um, political messages slash graffiti. Um, Yeah. Do you have um, anyone in your sphere that you, that inspires you? Like why, why did you get into painting? How did you get into painting? Like, yeah. So I think uh, I got into painting. It was kind of like something that I always did as a kid. Like I I was uh, more of a quiet, introverted child and quite shy Mm. um my brother was like super loud so I I I think even as a baby apparently I never cried and I was um so like drawing is something that I think most kids do and then some of us just carry on and others don't yeah so I guess I just carried on with it I I I liked it and um and that's how it's kind of how I understand painting has changed a lot over time like it very much started this thing that I just enjoyed doing and I didn't even think about why Later, it became something because I had a big gap between university and like my late 20s when I came back or mid 20s when I came back to painting again. And at that point, it was very much like a personal therapy of like needing to kind of have this protective space away from the world to switch my brain off and to just put something on paper without thinking and without without all of the stuff that was going on for me personally. 
Um, and then now it's more about communication. It's like my way of like connecting and speaking with people just like writing can be or drag can be or, or like whatever, like, you know, accounting probably can be, you know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Um, I, I, let's not let's not devalue accountants but okay um no i was being serious my mom's no, an accountant, I, like, I know I think, you, you know my, bio, <laughs> my biological dad is an accountant and i just sort of anytime someone says the word accounting i just go oh i can't i'd like i i can't i can't with accounting. i just love it's like the classic think of a boring job and that's what we think of so yeah, yeah. is there anything hashtag justice for accountants we yeah, need people exactly. to realize that it's a wonderful thing too yeah I they agree. help us do our taxes <laughs> this is true when yes they do people do help with taxes um and they may identify as accountants and that's yeah great. Um, but yeah i think so to go to what you said so that that was kind of the progression of getting into painting mm. for me and that's like now i'm very much into like expanding that into like video making and makeup and i really see like art like art is like a way of thinking and a way of existing and we happen to like gravitate towards certain things like yeah. What it like whatever that may be but I, I always think it's possible to like transfer that to other spaces um mm -hmm. and I'm like learning to sew and I do music and all of these things um so yeah and then artist wise what inspires me? I actually for a long time I like really I was so fixated on being unique and being me and having a style like I was very much obsessed with that idea yeah. it, it seemed so important to have that I like purposefully wouldn't even look at other artists because I didn't want to like accidentally copy them. Um, so of course I would follow people online, but I, I would almost be this opposite sense from inspiration because I would see someone else do something and I'm like, yeah. okay, now I can't do that because they're doing it. And I definitely don't think that's a good way to go about being creative because mm -hmm. I think like we all are just inspired by each other and we, and I think it's, it, and so now I'm in a process of like allowing myself to be less unique in order to start myself on a path towards finding something that's more like personal to me. Mm -hmm. And I think you have to go through those stages and it's almost like, I think for a lot of people, we all like culturally, we value success so mm -hmm. much and we're so afraid of failure that a lot of people don't even want to do those two years or however long it is of being bad at something. They don't want to go through those like six months of baby drag in order to get to where they're at or they're like afraid of it. And I think it's just, that like that is a part of the process like you can't jump to being this like masterpiece and uh, <laughs> I think focusing on the process and just really enjoying it yeah. and not worrying about whether it's good in quotation marks or not is yeah. like such a freeing thing um so now I guess I am becoming more inspired by other artists I'm more I'm more into just like Friend, like street art like all street artists and muralists and friends of mine mm -hmm. that's what my feed is full of and drag like like drag inspires me more than anything like um how like creative makeup um like just the way that people exist and the characters like a lot of it won't be like looking at and I'm not necessarily inspired by like an aesthetic that I then transfer over but more just like an idea or or a feeling that I see in another art form that I then translate into what I'm doing or thinking about yeah um yeah so I don't know I, who would I pick out just so many people I think that's the beauty of like having Instagram being such a part of our daily life as much as there's like challenges that come with it is that but, I every single day on my phone I yeah. just see hundreds and hundreds of amazing artists, artists that inspire yeah. me in so many ways and as long as I can maintain that mindset of being inspired rather than being debilitated or having FOMO or feeling like I'm rubbish like it's a really beautiful thing do you do you find so that's that's a very telling like Instagram especially do you think um uh, so for me as a drag performer, I'm uh, my evolution of drag has been quite a journey. But like, I I've only really started properly painting my face in the last year. So I've been a performer for about seven years, um, working pretty comfortably. Um, but uh, I've only just recently started to use makeup, and it can be at what times. What did you do before? Well, I was doing this sort of gender non-binary drag. I'll send you images. It's camp. It's ridiculous. But like, so it's a whole journey. Um, okay. But, what? 
Oh no, I was just surprised like how you were doing drag without using makeup. I was like, were you wearing a mask? Were you bare face? Well, yes, I, 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 I guess I considered it sort of gender non-binary drag or like messy drag or like it's it's a full it's so I think the spectrum of drag is quite unique and so like I I started my progression loosely was dude in a dress dude in a dress and a wig dude in a dress and a wig and a small amount of makeup and now like I'm I'm putting on a proper face but, oh yeah baby steps yeah there's someone who does the uh Cuban missile crisis in LA mm. um they do like burlesque but they'll do it purposefully bare-faced man yeah. but then they'll have the like showgirl outfit and do this amazing burlesque number and I found that like so interesting how it shifted just like it's like putting a little needle in the illusion yeah. and showing part of the illusion and not other bits and I, I actually found that really interesting so that's essentially what I've been doing more or less for the last I've been doing burlesque cabaret drag with that sort of gender bending kind of drag um, yeah so having that foot in sort of two areas but I've, I've started evolving and I've started like starting playing with makeup. And I think for me, I find it difficult. And I, you sort of alluded to this a little bit. It's like being inspired by people on Instagram while also having that sort of the mental health journey of like seeing someone and going like, oh, I wish I could paint like this person or I wish I could do this. And it's like that juxtap like that hard, fine line between being inspired by people but also having that sort of mental health moment and going like oh I wish I could be as good as them like yeah and it's so easy to fall into that more negative space mm -hmm. of like feeling bad about yourself or the work that you do and I think we all go through that it's almost like inevitable in some sense but I think we can learn to not cultivate it or learn mm -hmm. to have a different perspective where like I mean, I'm still on that journey myself for sure. Like, and I think one thing that helps is like feeling secure in myself and learning to feel secure in myself so that I'm not comparing myself to others. Yeah. And then on top of that, being happy for other people's success. And like when I see another artist and they do something amazing, I'm so happy for them and for what they're creating rather than putting it back on myself and thinking like, oh, I can't do that. That means that I'm not good. And it's more like keeping the focus on them and being like, you're fucking, oh, I just saw it. You're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it's, it's true. It, it's, it's hard. It's that like fine line, especially if you're on a mental health journey, is like to sort of figure that, figure out to praise and to prop up. So like when people do well, I'm like, yes, I'm so proud of my friend for doing this amazing thing. But also like, I'm like, why can't it happen to me <clears throat> so like, yeah yeah it's a, it's a tricky, def, yeah. tricky mistress I definitely understand that and I think I think a lot of us go through it and I think talking about it is a great first step because yeah, what's great. funny is that I think before I like got seriously into art and painting I always had these like I had these subconscious ideas that once I get to a certain point then like you've made it or you're like secure so it's like if I'm in a certain amount of galleries or my work is like unique enough or whatever mm -hmm. and it's exactly the same story that people tell themselves about money like once I earn 30,000 pounds a year then I'll be happy or once I earn that amount and the figure just keeps going up exactly because I think to a certain extent the external doesn't really matter it's about the mindset that you're bringing to it mm -hmm. and it, it's never going to end and I, I do see more and more now people with hundreds of thousands of followers who are very like successful in what they do they still have these same thoughts. They're still comparing themselves to other people. They still need to take these mental health breaks and remind themselves of all that stuff. So like, I get it's, it's almost depressing that it never goes away, but then it's also encouraging to be like, I don't need to wait until I'm X, Y, or Z yeah. in order to feel good about myself. I can feel good about myself right now, no matter what I'm doing or who I am. Great. Oh, wonderful. Um, I, we are slightly running out of time. I've just looked at the time and I've gone, oh, we're not going to be able to do half the things. Um, so what I'll do, the news, um, I've got a couple of news articles that we were going to talk about, but um, I know I'm cognizant of the time. So I know um, I'll save them and I'll put them on next week's show. But um, okay. Uh, well, I was promised games, so I want a game. You want a, oh, a game? <laughs> oh, uh, uh, I, well, I, I was did... just kidding. <laughs> okay, well, okay. 
I was going to say like guess who, but for drag. Um, oh, I was just kidding. You do what you want. I am, what, I am your clay. Mold um, me. Oh, I do like a nice molding. Uh, <laughs> is that is that what we're? <laughs> That's so an example of how you can turn anything into a sexual innuendo. It's I like, have... oh, tree. Oh. <laughs> you can play with my branches any day. On the window. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's I'm like... just naming things that are in front of me right now. <laughs> yeah, it was like, ooh. And I love it. Also, side note, I love your backdrop. I have decided to go for drag fabric with glitter and sparkles over my window and my curtains. So I love that. That's the journey I've gone on. Fabric? Um Yeah. Well, I'm so into, like, you can kind of see it with my shirt, too. Yeah. I love anything that's, like, an old lady sofa pattern. Like, I love it. And I use it in my art, too, as, like, the background for paintings. Um, and why is that? I just love it. I think I'm, see, I, I really look forward to being an old lady. I think Same. I'm really going to come into my prime then. Same. So until then, I'm just hanging about. <laughs> I fully re- I fully relate to that. Um, well, <laughs> so unfortunately, it's the end. We've run out of time because, and I think we've probably gone over time. If anything, um, it was an absolute pleasure. I've had so much fun. I've enjoyed myself immensely um, getting to talk to you. Um, if people want to follow you on social media, uh, where can they follow you? Yeah, uh, mostly Instagram at David Puck Artist P U C K, and then kind of YouTube too, but it's pretty much just Instagram but I also have a website davidpuckartist.com if you don't use Instagram Mm -hmm. uh yeah and I have the paintings murals makeup I have the video series which is being posted regularly and you can if you have any questions or anything any like anything to say I'm I'm very responsive Instagram's like the main way that I talk to friends too so I'm on it too much probably but I'm there you can find I fully relate to that. All right, guys, gals, and non-binary <laughs> pals, thank you so much for listening to Driving You Homo. As always, I'm Wayne Carter, and you can follow me at one Wayne Carter. You can follow Driving You Homo at Driving You Homo on all of the social media. You can follow David Puck at David Puck Artist. Please uh, do that. If you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel slash our Instagram, uh, please do that. Um, and if you aren't following David, um, please get onto that because they do some truly inspiring work. Um, and I'm, I'm it's great. Uh, stay safe, stay well, and uh, I love you all. Bye.